Hi. Uh, I thought I'd go over a few of the features of this uh, uh, 9x19 uh, Enco. Uh, it's pretty much the same as the G4000 that, hit, uh, that Grizzly is selling. Um, there's uh, two carriage feed levers. Uh, this one is slow for cutting. Uh, this is the half nut engagement. There's a different gear ratio because there's a number of gears in the apron that uh, are not involved in the half nut but are involved with the uh, this feed lever. Uh, what it does is it slows down the, the carriage feed. It still drives through the rack. Um, that's about it. This is a 4 inch chuck that uh, came with the lathe and uh, it's, I don't know what brand it is, but it's, uh, it, it runs really true compared to the little chucks I was getting for the, uh, the mini lathe. The spindle drive is interesting because there's this tiny little V-belt. This is a 5 millimeter wide uh, by 730 millimeter long. Uh, there's a, a bit of a clutch action here. Uh, the spindle doesn't turn when you have the right belt on and there's some slack in it. Um, there's a, a clutch in here. Uh, it's supposed to be a breakaway clutch that uh, if you jam the machine it's supposed to slip. Um, this is the motor pulley. <coughs> Excuse me. It's supposed to be three-quarter horsepower, I believe. This is part of the gearing for threading and turning the the feed. Uh, I'm going to set the uh, camera down for a minute here and turn it on. I replaced this this gear. The uh, what came on it was this plastic gear, and when the previous owner crashed it, it took some of the teeth off. And uh, and so they sh they sell a me uh, metal gear, but it's really tight clearance up here, and there doesn't seem to be any uh, any way of adjusting the gear mesh on this. Um, anyways, you'll see when it's when I turn this thing on. I had to plug it in because the. Uh, the switch here. This is a forward and reverse switch. When it's working properly, you can turn the motor off from here. When I engage the clutch, you can hear the gears whining. Now, if I disengage the quick change, the feed screw stops turning. Let me unplug this noise. Anyways, uh, so there's nine gears in the, in the quick change, but that's really only part of the uh, selection for threading. Uh, using different combinations of gears here, uh, this is a 127 tooth and this is a 120 tooth. Uh, you switch them around for going to metric and the other way for inch. Basically this machine is set up for inch. Uh, here's something I've got to replace, repair. Uh, this got broken, and this is the repair they did. But it uh, it limits the carriage travel. Now I like the feature that there's T slots on this uh, cross line. <clears throat> it uh, it allows you to do a lot of different things. You can set it up as a um, there is a milling attachment available that's similar to what's available for the mini lathe, but it looks like it ought to be a lot solid or a lot more rigid but the whole machine is a lot heavier than the 7 by 12s 7 by 10s uh, they run 60 70 pounds this thing runs over 200 and believe me I don't move this thing alone uh, I'm beyond that kind of work but I really like the tailstock there's a lot of meat in it this looks like a solid block here uh, you do have to have a wrench to uh, to clamp it, but that's a minor hassle. There are ways of uh, changing the the bolt 
to uh, uh, make it lock up quicker and I may go into that. Uh, the travel on the uh, tailstock really isn't much more than uh, what you see on the 7x12s. Uh, this is the original uh, four-way tools and I, I know why I got rid of mine off the mini lathe. You need shims and this these are uh, half inch uh, uh, tools but you still need shims under it to bring it up to uh, uh, the cutting uh, you know center line on the lathe. Other than that uh, the faceplate that they send with this thing is uh, much heavier much much sturdier than uh, than what you see on the mini lathe. Uh, that's that's about all I've got to say right now. I've got to go in and, and repair the half nut. Uh, the bottom half nut doesn't engage when it's when when you operate it. It should. The threading dial, it's nice. I haven't used it for threading yet. There's uh, end play adjustments on the feed screw, and uh, these are there's a set screw in the end, and you set your clearance by turning and then you lock it up with the with the set screw and they use the same thing on the tailstock and the cross slide travel um, same deal there's a, a set screw in back that locks up so you can set the amount of uh, backlash you got in here other than working with the uh, the cross slide nut which is right under here uh, that's really about it. Uh, I I had my doubts about this uh, uh, this V belt. I mean, it's skinny. It's five millimeters wide. Two uh, seven hundred and thirty millimeters long is the what they call for the. Um, Uh, the correct belt. The uh, idler pulley here is on a cam operated by the lev lever and a really hefty uh, hefty spring so that V-belt has an awful lot of tension on it but well there you go uh, this is what you see uh, the Grizzly G4000 looks identical to me. I ordered parts for that machine. Uh, I'll know when they get here whether they'll fit, but they, they look like they should fit. So anyways, um, that's about it. I just thought I'd uh, publish this as a entertainment. <laughs>